All right, hello, everyone, and welcome back to Kotobo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the Airbus A330 Neo mod, which is being made by form user Kartafel Kuchin. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is all the parts necessary to build your very own real-world Airbus A330 Neo, which... I don't know why, but just something about that mod highly amused me to have an Airbus here in the game. So, uh, in we go to the space plane hangar to have a look at all the parts we do get. And we're actually not going to put anything else on here for size comparison, at least yet, because, well, it's just a really big plane. It is an Airbus, after all. So, yeah, it's uh, it takes up quite a lot of room. And that means we'll just go straight to our mod filter, leaving on the A330 Neo parts, and start with probably the most important of them all, and that is the A330 Neo body. Now, this thing is, well, basically the entire fuselage of the aircraft and is beautifully massive, and holds a suitably large amount of Kerbals, with a minimum crew of two to operate, with a max capacity of 30. Now, it does also have a built-in data transmitter, the usual crew report, a battery holding 150 electric charge, and also a fuel tank holding a 2,500 liquid fuel. And as you can see right here, it is big real big. I mean, again, it's an Airbus. <laughs> I just, I like it. I like that a lot. Now, on uh, the actual uh, skin for this thing, it has uh, three different options. A standard white, a uh, black stripe going along the back there, and then the Airbus one here, having the full Airbus a Neo bit painted on the side, which is uh, pretty cool. So you do got some fun options. The light is pretty good on there, too. Nicely lighting up all of the windows. Uh, very cool. And, best of all, this has interiors for both the cockpit as well as the, you know, main passenger cabin of the plane, which is great. We'll take a look at that in a little bit when we do get outside. But all in all, a very awesome and gigantic part for building a pretty fun plane. Now, after that, we've got nothing in fuel tanks, but in engines, we do have the Trent 7000 jet engine. And this is a pretty powerful one there, producing a maximum of 400 kilonewtons of thrust with an ISP in either vacuum or atmosphere, but I mean, you know, it's always going to be an atmosphere, of 14,000 with uh, using an air intake as well as liquid fuel. Now, it does also have a built-in air intake for it, as you would expect, and all in all, just a nice-looking engine. And as you can see, it's, well, big. I mean, it's it's a jet engine. So, yeah, fits with the Airbus, looks good. I love the detailing on the paint scheme on there, even having the Rolls-Royce logo right there. A very cool, just a lot of wonderful little details. And the modeling itself is just very nicely done. I do a very much enjoy it. And even though it is really meant for this plane, I don't see why you couldn't put on other planes. It could be a fun engine to use on other things. I just imagine the possibilities you may have there. But let's check that off for now and then move down to command and control where we got nothing structural, nothing robotics, nothing same in coupling and payload, but in aerodynamics. Oh boy, we got a lot of parts. Whole lot of parts. Now, a lot of them are sort of identical to one another, so I am going to group together some of them. And we also have left and right versions of almost all of them, except for the vertical stabilizer, of course. So there is uh, just a lot of uh, the same thing in here, so it's not quite as daunting as it seems. But we'll start with the first one, the A330neo left horizontal stabilizer. And of course, comes in a right variety as well. Now this is a control surface with a relative wing area of six. Now, moving on, we then have an inboard aileron, again, control surface, this time with a relative wing area much smaller of a 0 0.86. 
Moving from there, we have the inboard flap, which is a lifting surface this time with a relative wing area of 0.5. Then we have the outboard aileron, again back to a control surface on this one with a relative wing area of 0.86. We then have two grouped together here, we have outboard flap 1 and 2. Now these are both lifting surfaces with a relative wing area of a 0.5 and really just in two sort of sizes there. We then have seven spoilers, which, uh, yeah, all of them are aero surfaces. All of them are, or rather, they do have a relative wing area of 0.25. And once again, you got seven of them, the spoiler zero through spoiler six. Then moving from there, we have the main wing, which of course, again, does come in left and right variety. Now this is a lifting surface with a relative wing area of 19 and also does hold fuel at 750 liquid fuel. And then finally in this category, we have the vertical stabilizer, which is another control surface with a relative wing area of 7.2. Now, what's fun about if we do pop on uh, the wing here, okay, it's the, hold on, gotta get the point, oh boy, it's the problem with the space plane hanger sometimes, there we go, just not enough room to work with things, but this one does also have the multiple paint schemes on it as well, the, uh, the white, the black, or the Airbus, and it is just uh, coloring this little bit of the wingtip over here. Now we got the same deal with the vertical stabilizer, that one went on much more nicely. Uh, again with this either having the white, the black, or the Airbus one, which is good because it does sort of complete the texture from the main body fuselage there, which is a uh, very nice. And as you can see on the wing, you've got a load of attachment points because, well, you gotta find places for all these things. There's just so many spoilers, flaps, and ailerons in here, but all quite good. Now then, after that, the only other thing we do have is in the ground category, as the remaining categories are all empty, but in ground, we have three items, but technically two, because again, we have a left and right version here. But for the first part we've got is the A330neo front gear, which is, of course, a retractable landing gear with a stress tolerance of 9,000. Then after that one, we have the A330neo main gear, which is the one that comes in that left and right variety. Again, though, retractable landing gear, this time with a stress tolerance of 18,000. So overall, quite a nice right there. And as you can see, they just fit quite nicely into the front of the plane there. And then these over on the sides right in there for those attachment points. So all in all, a lot of good solid parts, most of which really are geared towards working purely with this Airbus, but some, like the engine, I could see it quite easily using on other craft, and honestly, maybe even some of the various flaps and spoilers in here, because though, again, they are intended to work with this, you could probably fit them in with other parts quite nicely. But let's actually load up a fully complete version of the Airbus here, which thankfully does come with the mod download. So you can enjoy this without having to fiddle around with everything yourself. Let's actually give it that nice Airbus uh, paint scheme there. Uh, very cool. And yeah, just overall, it is a very good looking plane with a lot of great details and does hold, oh boy, a lot of crew. <laughs> 30, 30 total with a lot of nice views on the inside. I actually wish this held more Kerbals because when you are in the interior, there are a lot of empty seats, which is a little sad, but I guess maybe this thing holding the full maximum number of Airbus passengers um, maybe might be a bit overkill, but still 
could be fun. So let's go out to launch and take a look at those interiors and how this thing does fly and handle. So let us uh, pop right on out and show off also the one minor issue I have with the mod. Overall, great, and it actually flies really well, and that's me talking, someone who's awful at flying. There's just one minor modeling issue. And that is if we go into the cockpit here, and most of the cockpit, very nice, loads of lovely switches there, all the instrumentation, but then, hole in the floor. <laughs> that's just my one, one tiny issue with this thing. Everything else, amazing. But we do, we do have a hole in the floor, and that, that is hard to ignore, especially when you're in the air. On the ground, eh, not so noticeable. But when you suddenly see, see green or blue down there, eh, you know, a little worrisome. A little worrisome. But beyond that, the cockpit view is a pretty cool. We, of course, got the second seat here. And then we have the passenger cabin. Ah, oh, and just look at all those empty seats we could be using. Ah! Now, if we toggle through, you can see that on the back of the, uh of the chairs we do have the map with the route i do i do like that little detail and yeah just it's kind of strange that in some places you've got kerbals uh, you know just slapped right together uh, there and in other places they have loads of room i kind of just wish it could fill up the entire thing uh, it would be i think a pretty fun but yeah we have 28 seats in total pack here for you to cycle around and it's just nice i really really like just the insane amount of kerbals you can hold in this thing of course we're now going down the other side of the aircraft now and it's just neat now let's of course head back outside and throttle up and actually show off the custom sound for the engines listen to that glorious jet engine sound beautiful <laughs> And different. It's always nice to get different sounds in on these things. Is a little bit loud, though. I may have to tone it down a bit on the uh, audio end for the video, but overall, still, though, very nice sound to it. It does sound like the real thing, as I assume it is probably just a file grab somewhere. And there we are. A nice, smooth takeoff. And if we do retract the landing gear, it's a very good, smooth animation for it bringing it back in, which I always do enjoy a smooth animation there. And very nice. And yeah, it's a very easy to control plane. Even with someone as awful as at piloting as I am, it's, you know, doesn't take much to get this thing to where you need it to go, which is pretty cool. So yeah, that is really it though for uh, this uh, video today. Not a whole lot to go over. Just a fun plane with a whole heck of a lot of different parts for the uh, for the aerodynamics, especially with all those flaps. But all in all, just a fun Airbus for you to fly around in the world with. So if you'd like to have a look at this mod for yourself, which I'd certainly recommend you go and do, you can have a look at the link in the description as per usual. But that, my friends, is going to be it for this episode. Hopefully you all have enjoyed and you do come back for the next one. Hopefully we'll be looking at yet another wonderful mod. But until that time, uh, thank you for watching. And as always, have a good one.